Like I, I know so many, you know, chefs that they have like a secret recipe that they don't share, you know. Yeah. Um, to me, that's just holding yourself back, you know. The moment you stop and you say like, what's made me successful is this one dish, that's when you stop growing yourself. Hawker markets are one of the must visits when you're in Southeast Asia. Just imagine all your local favorite foods, all housed under one giant roof. Today, I'm going to be bringing you behind the scenes to Potluck Hawker Eatery, where we get to see how Dom and Justin was able to bring this unique concept into North America. Let's go behind the scenes and check out the secret sauce behind their successful launch. Potluck Hawker Eatery is located on Canby Street in Vancouver, an area known for many smaller boutique shops and restaurants lining the busy street. They open Wednesday through Sunday for lunch from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. and dinner from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., giving their customers lots of opportunity to grab some delicious hawker-style eats. Food that's ideal for a quick bite for lunch, ordering for takeout, or sharing amongst family and friends. Hello, hello. Thanks hey. for having me here today. Yeah, thanks, Wilson. Like, I'm really, really excited to be here because Hawker's Market food is one of my favorites. Can you actually tell us a little bit more about the concept behind a Hawker's Market? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the whole idea of Hawker's um, and the idea of potluck is, is to bring together all the different Southeast Asian flavors together. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what you want to be able to do because like a hawker's market is huge with so many different stalls and now you're just putting everything under one roof. Essentially, yes. Um, at the same time, we try to keep the menu limited and small mm -hmm. so that we can keep uh, rotating and exploring and, and um, and changing the menu as we go. And something that I really like about your food is that you keep the authentic style and technique of cooking, but then yet you also have this modern twist to it. Like even just looking at your decor and the aesthetics, it's like, wow, this is so fresh. Yeah. It's it's not like the typical really grungy kind of look. It's yeah. like, wow, it's fresh. It looks Which is good too, vibrant. but yeah, we want we definitely want customers to come in and, and feel comfortable. And so that, that way is the best way we can introduce people to our food. Perfect. Actually, speaking of your food, you want to show me? Yeah, absolutely. Cool, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Now, when it comes to the menu, Justin combines Malaysian, Thai, and Filipino flavors into a symphony of South Asian cuisine, all wrapped up in Hawker Street food-style dishes that really fit the vibrancy of the flavors that they offer. And when it comes to prices, Potluck also offers a ton of value with an average ticket cost of only $15. No wonder this place has exploded onto the scene since its opening in April of 2020. You know, this is like Instagram famous. Like, it's mind blowing how many times this shows up on my feed. We always knew the egg yolk is very undermined uh, in the local community, yes, right? Yes. Because it is common in Asian community, but yeah, yeah, yeah. local people do not really know what this sauce is exactly, yeah. right? It's only available in Chinese restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanna, we wanna have that. So that was our start, right? Yeah, yeah, and to okay. balance that, yeah. We put in like chili jam to give it a little bit of a spice yeah, yeah, yeah. and a green mango to cut the grease a little bit with the mm -hmm. sourness. Just so about Did, do I get to make my own? own, own if you want, I got two ready. You Beautiful. can make one. Yes. And I can make one. Beautiful. You can follow me. Beautiful. Let's cool. do that. So we got one brush. We call it like the Picasso brush. Picasso <laughs> brush. Yeah, yeah, it's a brush. We just coat it gener generously on a bread so that it kind of like evenly toast it around. So I just kind of like uh, rub it around so that it's evenly coated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rub it around. Exactly. So this is your famous egg yolk sauce. Yeah, with the butter and the, the egg yolk sauce. Yeah. Yes. The saltiness, buttery, creamy flavor yeah. comes from the egg yolk sauce, right? And then the chili jam kind of gives a spice from the chili. And the slaw gives the sourness, the, cut, the grease cut into it, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I even painted your. It's your okay. Side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dose <laughs> mine with more. Yes. I'm gonna do this one. Yes. I'm gonna do this side. Thank you. I'm gonna dose mine with extra egg yolk sauce. So where did you uh, meet? Justin. Okay. Justin. So um, 
I'm like more like a business person, right? But I always love cooking. So when I first moved to Vancouver, I looked for a kitchen a cook job. Yeah. And uh, my first job, Justin called me the next day, and I worked for him for okay. over a year. And then, uh, and then I, I stopped, and I went back to my country to do my restaurants and stuff. And yeah. then when I came back, yeah, we just like decided to start. This. That's really cool. Like you used to work for him, and now you guys are partners. Yeah. 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 It's Great good. stuff. Yeah. So now we got that one. So yeah. we do a little bit, a scoop of a chili jam, right? Like this. And just kind of like draw it in. Yeah. Oh, and is it really uh, spicy? It looks really. really spicy. It's not, not right? Really. Not really. That's why, that's why everybody can eat, right? Yeah. yeah. If we were to put actual, that's why we call it chili jam, right? Like if we were to put like chili sauce or the chili yeah. paint, it's totally different, right? So we make it a little sweeter on that one, right? Okay, so now, stop it in there. Fine. Wow. Yeah. See, I toast it a little longer so yeah. the bread holds. When oh. you toast it a little bit like uh, uh, less, the, yeah. bread, the, 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 the bread would be a little softer. Right, okay, now I get it. Wow. Exactly, right? That's, that's a little that's difference. That's the right? secret sauce. That's a difference. So now we put our slaw, yeah. Yeah. So just kind of like I take a little pinch, but not too overwhelming the other uh, components inside. Yeah. Then. We put our cereal, which has curry leaf inside as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Is this a cereal? Cereal. Cereal, a little bit of fried shallots, and then we put in, uh, of course, the butter, and then we toast the cereal with the butter. Yeah. Ooh, I love this. Some milk powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Beautiful, so, and this is good go. to go. Voila, done. Wow, can I eat this? Yes. I'm gonna have a bite right now, I'll make my own sandwich. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Not Thank a you. problem. Not a problem. Thank you for helping out with uh, another sandal. <laughs> now, the space that Justin and Dominic have created is truly one of a kind. Successfully transferring the vibrancy and fun of the food that they offer into the surrounding area. From the colorful wallpaper in the restaurant and washrooms to the iconic ingredients put on display. Potluck Hawker Eatery certainly has a fun, nostalgic vibe for those choosing to dine in. It really is inspiring to see a restaurant like this open during such hard times and see them receive so much support from the local community. Tell me, tell me more about Potluck Hawkers. I think when you guys first started, actually you just opened during COVID. Yes, yeah. So I, I did the, the typical training, the classic training. Uh, I worked in a lot of bistros and Italian food and uh, at one point in my life, you know, I, I kind of got burnt out of that and, and I kind of thought about what kind of made me happy and what, what kind of food made me happy, you know, and, and uh, that's when I wanted to discover a little bit more about my roots, mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia and Singapore and stuff like that. Has opening a restaurant been one of your dreams or you just kind of enjoy it and you just, everything kind of just... Yeah, you know, places? to be honest, uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of chefs, you know, like the their dream is always to open their own restaurant. And, and for me, uh, I can't say I've, I've ever had that dream, you know? And uh, I've cooked for a long time and, and uh, explored a lot of different types of cuisine and kept learning as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And at some point I, I figured out that I didn't really want to learn anything else except for the food I'm doing. Uh, so that's when I thought it would be a good idea to explore a little bit more about Malaysia mm -hmm. and give something back to the community. And I think with my experience of opening Longtail and, and other restaurants, um, I kind of had that in, in the back of my brain. So, so it kind of came together. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. And I started to get more excited about it. But definitely it wasn't something that, you know, since I was a kid or since I started cooking, I was yeah. like, oh, I want to have my own place or whatever. Right. So, so that passion just kind of grew on you. You're like, yeah, wow. Absolutely. it's, And then now you just want to have your own creative outlet yes, yeah. to actually bring that cuisine. Yeah. And, and I thought it would just, it, it's not, I think at this point of my life, it's, it's not even all about the cooking. Of course, it's, it's great to showcase something creative and, mm -hmm. and, and your own story and stuff like that. But it really is about giving back to the industry as mm. well. And um, when we hire cooks and, and sous chefs and stuff like that, to give them the opportunity to grow and learn something different. And, yeah. and, and I hope as well that they'll be just as successful. Right. So like, it's, you had that idea, you, you know what, you, you had the experience, you've been in the industry for long enough, and now you're like, you know what, let's open up a restaurant. 
Um, and you told me a little bit about the story, the crazy story of you coming in here super angry. Yeah, it, you know. <laughs> you're like, it, I'm like, I was like, yo, uh, Justin, tell me the story when you're about to cry. And you're like, yes, when I first walked into this place, I'm yeah, about to cry. I was so excited. You know, I, I think it's just emotional roller coaster, right? And this is, of course, before COVID even dropped on us. And, yeah. um, you know, we just put a lot of money into this place and, and we didn't really know what we we're getting into. And, and um, you know, I knew we we're going to do a lot of renovations and, and make, make the restaurant all pretty and everything. But, you know, we, we, we've been cooking all our lives, cleaning all our lives. And, and when I came into this restaurant, it came from like almost like an owner that really didn't care, right? And, and the condition of the restaurant was just like, I've never seen anything like you, it before. Like how so? Just like trash everywhere. It was like he just walked out of service midway and, and uh, wow. um, like huge stock pots of, of, of stock on, on the burner and stuff like just moldy in the fridge. And it was just disgusting. And so then the, the whole process was super difficult for you guys. Cause like, it's, it's really scary. Cause yeah. after you guys took over and you're like, you had all these big dreams. You're like, you know what? We're gonna merge the culture, make something good, give back to the community. And all of a sudden COVID hits. Yeah, I, I mean, it really made us rethink the whole process and how we're gonna tackle it. Uh, I guess we took possession in February it was mid-March when, when COVID broke out here in Vancouver. And um, when that hit, we were probably about 65% uh, complete, right? So mm -hmm. it's not like we could take anything back and, and yeah. oh, let's not do the floors and let's, let's not paint this or whatever. We were already like ha more than halfway through it. So mm -hmm. there, there was really no option but to complete it, right? It's, that's crazy. So after you guys, you know what, let's open the doors. Let's, let's hope for the best. Let's yeah. hope someone comes. And then you open the doors and it's like line up out the doors every single day. Yeah. Like how, 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 what was that secret sauce? What was the thing that made it work for you guys? I, I think our timing, like I, like I said, um, you know, during COVID, like it, it just seemed, it seemed like a, a really bad time, but I think we we're blessed when the time we were actually ready to open was when people were ready to dine in and people were looking for something fresh and exciting. Um, so it just, it was well received and, and even leading up to it, you know, uh, we're still, you know, finishing little details a couple weeks before, but we yeah. had so many people come in and, and say they're in the neighborhood and they're so excited to, to come here. Right. So mm -hmm. we, we just try to be ourselves, you know, and, and that's what it is. We try to keep a small menu. I know some people expect something larger and some people might compare us to other Malaysian restaurants like yeah. banana leaf and, and so forth that have an extensive menu. Mm -hmm. um, but what we try to do is the same idea of the name Potluck. It's, it's really a coming together of different Southeast Asian um, cuisines. And, yeah. and it's not just focused on Malaysia. It's, it's inspired by my mom's cooking. But I mean, I have cooks from the Philippines, from Burma and, and Vietnam and all sorts of places. Yeah. Uh, so it's really bringing all those flavors together Right. And keeping everything fresh, like we keep a short menu, we change it frequently. We're not afraid to take something that's popular off the menu so we can put something else on, right? Right. Um, and there's always going to be demand for certain items to stay. Yeah. But uh, we keep continually trying to push ourselves. We have, currently we have a different menu from lunch and dinner, and we hope to as well have a, a brunch menu on the weekends. So wow. um, we don't want to be like a typical restaurant. We want to push ourselves to be like the best restaurants in the city. Right, just be innovative, combine everything together, sure, bring the yeah. best from all these different cultures Absolutely, and bring yeah. it back here. Mm -hmm. How does that creative process come about? Like, you know what, chasing fads are, are difficult. Yeah, I, I just get inspired by them. You know, I see what everyone else is doing and I was like, we can make something with our own style and, and uh, you know, with a Malaysian twist or, or whatever, right? Yeah, that's, that's part of, what we really enjoy and that's why I try to teach all the cooks as well to also have a input on the menu as well because right. that's how we all grow together right mm -hmm. like I, I know so many you know chefs that they have like a secret recipe that they don't share you know yeah um, to me that's just holding yourself back you know the moment you stop and you say like what's made me successful is this one dish that's when you stop growing yourself Ah, so always innovating. You know what? Not a lot of people can actually keep innovating. You know, it's, it's tiring. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of R&D and it's a lot of money Absolutely. spent and time spent on it. Yeah. And you're already cooking every single day with your dish and you're still innovating. So definitely shines through your food. And thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that secret with us. Yeah, I mean, if anything, sometimes 
you know, the challenge is actually holding back because, really, you, you know, as you can see, like, you know, we have a small kitchen, yes. small restaurant, very little fridge space, mm. very little freezer space. So uh, in, in some ways, that's to our advantage because we've got to keep things fresh. We've got to prep day by day right. and whatever we use, we sell out, right? right. So. Something that I, I really appreciate about you guys is, is your aesthetics, your design, and it's just the whole flow. Like, I, I was just saw, uh, I just saw Dom, he came out and he was grabbing, like, noodles. Like, yeah. is this part of the concept or is this your smart way of... Yeah, I mean, part of the vibrancy of our style of food is, is really the branding and, 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 you know, all these little bottles and the, they're so colorful and they're yeah. naturally part of the design, right? Yeah. But naturally, they're part of what we use day, day in, day out, right? Yeah. So, for people to see that and a lot of it could be nostalgic moments for people, you know, yes. like, oh, like I used to use this at home and stuff like that. That's exactly what we were, yeah, we were but, talking about yeah. too. Yeah. But like, you can oh, never have a that. shortage of, of uh, storage space, right? Yes. So, yes. so for us to be able to use, utilize the wall and, and the pony wall and stuff like that mm -hmm. and still showcase it to customers is, is great. And I think at some point, you know, we can, you know, have some products for sale as well so that yeah. people can try to make the food at home themselves and uh, maybe even our own chili oil and, yeah. and, and sambal and stuff like that as well. It's so crazy how not only are you so focused um, on your food, but also the aesthetics, the design, and actually understanding the whole concept and tying everything together. For sure, it's yeah. definitely like all these years of working in the industry definitely paid off for you and you did an amazing job. So tell me more about your plans, plans for Pollock. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of just ride it out and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an interesting time. You know, I've had people ask me, you know, is it a good time to open a restaurant? Is there a market for that? And I think, you know, with our concept being casual um, and affordable and fresh, definitely I think there is, you know, there, there's a market for that for sure. Right. So we'll see where it goes. You know, definitely I have a lot of different ideas, you know, for the future and maybe even smaller concepts. And, yes, yes. And, but it's got to work with the market. It's got to work with, the, you know, what's going on today. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank I you for really having appreciate me. this. Yeah. Take care. You too. So there you go, friends. The secret sauce behind Potluck's successful launch. Justin's philosophy is simple. Take the leap and chase your dreams and always innovate to come up with fresh new ideas. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Secret Sauce. I'll see you guys in the next episode.